What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room. Man, I'm back at you with another video. Listen, I got a special technical video that we talked about on our live stream we did on the Discord the other day. And of course, we had some technical difficulties, but we were testing the systems out. And I promised you guys I would get you guys the video that I was going to give you on the lesson on inside bar strategy. And hey, here it is, man. Man of my word, I'm going to give it to you guys. So without further ado, hit that like, share, subscribe button. I need you to come along with us in this journey. Listen, in the descriptions, going to be a lot of information to make you a better trader with a bunch of tools and tidbits. And it's all there to share share and grow as like-minded investors, not just our pocketbooks, but our knowledge base as well of understanding the market. So without further ado, man, let's get at the video. And as always, if you're ready, follow me and let's go to work together. TWR wants to remind the viewer that all content on this channel is for education and entertainment purposes only, all right? You are responsible for every decision you make within the stock market. Have fun, but be cautious and always go to war. All right, team. So let's talk about the inside bar strategy, okay? What does it do? All right, well, it indicates possible breakout or reversals in underlying stocks, okay? Typically, it's a two-bar price action strategy. The inside bar or IB closed inside a high and low of an outside bar, also known as a mother bar, and it represents a period of consolidation or wealth accumulation. So here's a nice representation of exactly what we're talking about, okay? We notice that the mother bar is highlighted there and the inside bar is closing inside of that mother bar, right? And there's a couple different ways it can look. So, you know, many shapes and forms, but ultimately this is what you're looking at is that the inside bar closes inside of a high and low of the mother bar. So you might be asking yourself, well, when can I use the IB strategy? Well, it works very well in trending markets. So stocks that are moving along and they got a lot of sentiment, either negative or positive, it works well with those particular underlying stocks. And it's going to be a trend in IB trades that are known as breakouts or price action reversals. And when you take these trades, okay, you're looking for key levels or triggers, you might hear a term. And when you're looking at those, those triggers are looking at as reversals. So the triggers are looking for reversals either up or down, or we're looking for breakouts above or below some consolidation areas. And a classic way to trade these are you use buy stops and sell stops at the high low trigger points. And so many ways to slice and dice this, but how I like to use the IB strategies, I like to use what's called a leg approach, all right? One good leg or two legs usually you can get on a great entry point on an IB strategy type of trade. And a leg is a period of trending up or down before a period of consolidation. In a day trading, typically IBs are noted on a daily chart and then they're traded within the 5 minute or 30 minute chart. On swing trades, again, the IBs are noted on the daily charts, but you can usually trade them within the hour to 4 hour charts. All right, so you're probably saying, Chuck, that's fine and dandy, man, but you know, how do I actually use it? Well, let's look at a couple charts and see what we can find on them because we had a couple great entry points from earlier that were alerted early in the week, and then we can see what they were doing, and then we'll look at some ones that we're watching for next week and see if we see some trending or at least some trigger points associated with those that we can have an idea of where to go from there. So let's take a look at some charts and see what we got. So first one that's up is AMD, okay? Now, I want you to pay attention to colors, all right? So we got our inside bar that's identified in the orange. So I'm gonna blow it up here in a second so you can see it. And then we got our mother bar or our outside bar identified in the purple. And then of course we got our recent low and recent high in blue and red associated. So let's look at it a little bit closer and blow it up and see some of the, what we're talking about with the inside, outside bar. All right, so right here, the orange, again, I told you that's the inside bar. That's what our trigger points are at, okay, for the inside bar. Now, the outside bar, the purple bar, that's where the inside bar closed within those highs and lows, all right? So when we're looking for trigger points, right, 
We need the stock to trend in the direction we want it to go. If it's a call, we want it to go up. If it's a put, we want it to go down, right, typically. But in order to make it to the trigger point, okay, it has to completely close above that trigger point to give us the idea that this is now trending up. And I like to use five minute charts when I'm looking at those because I wanna make sure that the price action is solid when it's closing. And sometimes, especially in trending stocks with volatility and things of that nature, if you're just looking at the one minute chart, you're gonna get too much noise and it can get clouded out. So you really need to cut the noise out a little bit and you need to go into a five minute and maybe a 10 minute chart just because there's just too much going on you can't get a good read on the direction that the stock is going to go all right another one i'm looking at for next week okay is neo all right again we got the orange that's our inside bar and we got the purple that's our outside bar all right this is one that especially is very popular but we have to be very cautious because as fast as this thing rises this thing tanks as well so this would be only really in my opinion would be a day trade only i would not try to swing this based off the inside bar strategy because of the volatility and how it's going to go now if we saw just killing it and continuing to rise up and we started getting really good positive sentiment then yeah sure maybe we could swing it as long as our entry point was great into this particular trade however i'm really leery on going anything further out unless it's a long leap type of contract with options or shares long term as far as Neo's concerned. And I did this one just because one of the orange inside bar was covering up that mother bar price action at the top. So I wanted you to see where the price action was at the top of this particular mother bar that we're looking at. And one thing that really I want you guys to understand with this particular stock, see that yellow square there? All right, that's a gap, okay? And gaps typically get filled, and we don't know when it's going to be filled and anything like that. So it could not be filled, and it could trend up, but we could see a pullback down to that to test that area and clear up that gap. So this one is definitely really got to be cautious, and you got to see the price action. And come Monday when the bell goes, we'll know pretty good idea of how this thing is going to go based off of maybe some weekend news and things of that nature. But I just want to highlight this because you really have to pay attention to this, that these things could drastically come down quick, but then if it comes down quick and tests that area, we probably might see a good indicator that it will shoot back up, and that would be an absolute great time to get into this particular stock for a day trade and possibly even a swing trade if it dipped low enough at that point. All right, so you're probably saying, Chuck, man, you're trying to predict the future and blah, 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 right? I got it, man. So let's talk about some things that we didn't predict the future on because they're already done, okay? I'm talking about PLTR, all right? We talked about this one, 6 October, and we identified two inside bars last week, and I want you guys to focus on the orange one, okay? We got the purple one there. That was early in the week on the 5th, but I want you to focus on the purple one that's on the 7th. So basically what we're doing is we're testing out our theory, okay? Here's our inside bar, okay? Those are our trigger points, right? Our high and our low, all right? And so what we're seeing here is we're seeing one of our high trigger points at 2414 and one of our low trigger points at 2355. And now I get it. I'm doing this on the weekend, so we already know where it went. But let's go into the chart a little bit, into the five-minute chart, and see if there was an opportunity to make some money going one direction or the other and see if we can identify that two-leg pattern. All right, so opening bell, right? We see we see what happened, okay? It dipped all the way down and it came down to our lower trigger point, right? But I want you to highlight this, okay? It did not close at that lower trigger point. So if we were waiting on this one and we were looking for it to close, and by the way, this is a five minute chart, and we were waiting for it to close to give us an indicator of what direction it was gonna go and it didn't close, that should cue us in to, hey, this thing might be trending up and we're looking to reverse. And then, boom, right there in that rectangle you see, we had a four leg up, which by any means on a five minute chart, that's 20 minutes of upward motion, man. That is fire and that's bank money. So if we would have got in at the lower price, especially when it didn't trigger and it didn't close below or lower trigger line, that would have been an indicator that, hey, this is probably gonna reverse and we could see some upward pressure and make a pretty solid day trade. And this would have been a kill day trade if we would have got in at that particular low level and rode this up to the top and again like I said one two legs are great but this one had such great upward pressure man this one continued to go up four legs and if you would have held out and had some patience this would have been a fantastic trade 
Now, not only can we do this going up, man, but look, we see that going further out in a week, right? Now we're into October 8th, moving in and things of that nature. If we would have got into it for a swing trade and we got in at the top because once again, that high trigger point, it didn't close above that high trigger point. So that's telling me that it's having a lot of, pr a lot of trouble getting up to that level and we're probably gonna see some downward pressure and boom, what happened? There we go, we got the downward pressure. We got one leg down, we got two legs down and this is a longer period of accumulation of wealth that you see with those yellow lines. And if we would have held out for that put because it couldn't cross that high trigger and close above that one, man, this would have paid out big time. And I didn't take this trade, but I'm highlighting this because this is a great example of how to use the inside bar strategy when you're looking at day trades specifically and also swing trades if they don't close completely above, those, above or below those trigger points. Another one we put on the watch list we were paying attention to, XOM, man. Energy and gas and oil was trending so hard, man. You could not notice it, all right? So this was definitely one that we know has has a lot of volatility and likes to move and things of that nature. So we noticed an inside bar there on the seventh, right? Okay, great. So what did it do? Oh, well, we can obviously see that this would have been a killer trade how we got into this inside bar strategy, especially with a call. So let's take a look and blow it up and see what it did as far as the chart is concerned when we go down into a five minute chart. All right, and when we're looking at the five minute chart, this is what I like to call a classic two leg, two leg. All right, so it closed above and it opened above, excuse me, our high trigger point, right? Right there in the orange, that's our high trigger point that we identified off of the inside bar from the seventh, okay? So on the eighth, it opened above that and had we got in to a trade, on that time because that was a trigger point it opened and cl and that essentially is considered closing above our trigger point man we would have had a killer day because this not only had one classic one leg up a brief moment of consolidation where it's deciding what direction is going but then boom we had another killer all the way up to a long period of accumulation of wealth and some consolidation and that would have been our ideal time sometime in that top yellow line to have pulled the trigger and got out of this trade but if we would have held on and been patient a little bit longer, man, it hit a high of 62.41, which definitely would have paid dividends towards the end of the market. But as we see at the end of the market, we don't want to hold these things too long and swing trades are really difficult because we saw a lot of selling volume closing out the market on this particular ticker. So, but definitely opening up, we would have got in at that purple line. Man, that would have been a killer trade. Up one, boom, wait a little bit, see what the market's going to do. Up a second one, get out, make your money, and go to the bank. Listen, team, I told you guys I would get you guys the information that was covered in that online classroom setting so that you guys can learn and grow, and I'm doing just that, okay? We're listening to your guys' suggestions. We're making improvements to the server. Come Monday, I got some new things for you guys, and I can't wait to get them out there to show you all what we got in store for you. Now, I need you to remember at Traders War Room, we look at the stock market like it's a war zone. The stocks and sector, those are our battles. We're doing this together as a team, man. I truly mean that, all right? Attack, conquer, and destroy. And it's done as a unit, man. We're growing, sharing, and learning together, not just our pocketbooks, but our overall understanding of the marketplace, man. The idea is to be better traders today than we were yesterday, and I live and breathe by that. And listen, I need you guys to get on board with this, and I hope to see you guys over there on the Discord because we got great things. Whether you're a free member or a paid member, man, it doesn't matter. There's something for everyone over there, a one-stop shop. Now, if that sounds good, all I got to say to you is follow me, and let's go to war.